I am here just a few minutes after I filmed my makeup and books tag, um, filming my July wrap up. This is where I went. Smith College. That's where I went to school. So I'm here to do my wrap up and I like to do these in like a really quick way because I have a lot of books. I can't really talk about all of them individually without this video being like an hour long. So this past month, the month of July, I read a total of 33 books which was better than June but also probably a bad idea because now during August I have kind of a burnout going and um, it's a little bit regrettable. <laughs> so I read 33 books. Out of those, 17 were audiobooks, 12 were hard copies, and 4 were ebooks. And out of those 33 books, here's the genre breakdown. 10 YA novels, three short stories, three thriller slash mystery, four memoirs, four books of poetry, two just adult fiction and literature, not like erotic adult fiction or literature, but just like meant for adults, five nonfiction books, one children's book, and one mass market paperback, which was a romance, but it's not I didn't, I wanted to call out that it was a mass market pa paperback because I um, am trying to do like a tester of mass market paperbacks in my life. Okay, so now I'm going to go through them in the order that I read them. Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed, The Fever by Megan Abbott, Peril at the End House by Agatha Christie, If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo, Honey Bee by Trista Matier, which was an ebook, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, Once and For All by Sarah Dessen, Love That Dog by Sharon Creech, which was the children's book that I read, and it was kind of a nostalgic read for me. I remember reading this when I was a kid and crying, and guess what? I cried again at 23 years old. Um, so this was the one children's that I mentioned. On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King. Perfect Ten by Elle Phillips. Phantom Limbs by Paula Gardner. Girls and Sex by Peggy Orenstein. A Thousand Mornings by Mary Oliver, which I also read as a hard copy and which I also put in a strangely inaccessible place for me. So I do not have that on the table in front of me. Royce Rolls by Margaret Stoll. A Girl's Guide to Moving On by Demi Metcomber? Macomber? If you know how to pronounce this, please tell me. Brain on Fire by Susanna K. Hillen. Dear Ejeoele by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. What Light by Jay Asher, which I did not know was a Christmas book until I had already borrowed it. <laughs> So that's a Christmas book that I read in July. You Are a Badass by Jen Cicero. The Shell Collector by Anthony Doerr, which was an ebook. The After Party by Jaina Prickrill. Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. The Last Time I'll Write About You by Don Lanusa, which was also an ebook. Final Girls by Riley Sager. Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han. Chemistry by Wei Ki Wang. Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang, which was an ebook and an arc because I got to feel special for once. <laughs> Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and if this, the condition of this like water damaged book is not, <laughs> is not a cautionary tale about ordering used off Amazon, I don't know what is. Um, it's still readable though and I love the book. Natasha and Other Stories by David Bismoskis, um, and that makes 33 books. So I really think I overdid it this past month. And I'm kind of paying for it now and how I feel about reading, as in I don't really feel like reading. The total number of pages was um, 8,772, so 8,772, with an average page count of 265, which I think is less than last month and it may account for some of the difference in the amount, number of books that I read. My average stars was 3.57, which I think is just on par um, with the other month that I've done this. So I do think I overdid it with cramming stories into my brain, but I do want to call out the great books that I read because I actually read a bunch of really great books that I think are now some of my favorites. Um, Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed, which I listened to as an audiobook on my way to visit my mom and I just cried. I cried like a few times, like not once, a few times. Um, that book really got to my soul. Um, Cheryl Strayed <laughs> is really amazing and she has 
um, a podcast with the other person who wrote the column that she wrote called Dear Sugars that I listen to every week and also makes me cry. She just has some way of writing exactly true things that are like you knew about it but you you didn't know how to say it in that way and then when you hear someone say something so perfectly true and honest it's just tears um which is also how i felt about hunger last month the next five star read was dark matter by blake crouch which is my favorite sci-fi of all time i think um i have not read that much sci-fi so that might not be saying much but i did love it i was on the edge of my seat the whole time i was listening to it i like wanted to go back to my office job so that I continue listening um, to <laughs> to this audiobook, which is a really good sign. Next on writing, A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King, which had me motivated to write for like a solid three days, which is really good considering I'm very, I have very low motivation when it comes to writing, despite the fact that that's like really what I want to be doing. Like that's really what I want to be doing. So why don't I do it? Who knows? It's a great book and some of the things that he said have definitely stayed with me and soaked into my brain as things that I need to remember and do. Um, and one of the things that he said was you need to write all the time and so far I have not started doing that. It's just hard when you have like other stuff going on in your life to like establish a healthy routine with things that you love. Like it's just not that simple quite frankly. Next, oh the upside of unrequited. I just read it. I know I'm a little bit late to the game on this particular book, but I did love it. I can't even tell you how thankful I am that there was a character who was fat and it was not all that she was and it played a part in who she was and how she walked through the world, but it was not her primary defining feature. I have found that in only one other book, I think, which was Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven, but this one was better at it. This was a very well executed book with a fat main character and I loved it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. It was just like the perfect fluffy YA where her fatness is taken seriously but her fatness is not the only thing that's going on. It was really really good and I absolutely loved how her relationship with her sister was portrayed. I love when YA novels also dive into family. My last five stars was this Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and I love Morgan Matson. The only book that I haven't read of her so far is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour which I have in my room. I'm kind of reading them in reverse order so I started with the most recent and I've been working backwards. Um, I just love her. I love the way that she writes like dynamic full characters and is able to dive really deep and um, takes the characters seriously and I think takes her audience seriously which is sometimes very lacking in YA. Like sometimes writers will really underestimate um, their young adult reader audience um, which um, is kind of patronizing and really turns me off from a book and Morgan Matson does not do that at all. She is a wonderful wonderful writer and this book was just honestly really hard to read um, because it has very serious very sad subject matter that is um, unfortunately closely related to some of the things that I'm going through at the moment and so it was timely in that it's good to read something that you relate to but also hurt me more because I can um, relate to it. Um, but it's a really great book with really dynamic characters, a really well-rounded plot. I really like it. It's definitely more character driven than plot driven. So don't go in, don't really go into any Morgan Matson book thinking that it's going to be like an action packed YA. It's really, really character driven. Those are my five star reads. So overall, I'm really happy with what I read in July, but I do think that I read too many books because now I'm almost halfway through August and I've only read five books. Um, so I'm reading at like one fourth pace of what I read last month, which is for all intents and purposes, a terrible slump for me. I know that some people only read five books a month and that is completely fine, but I spend hours and hours listening to audiobooks at work and I haven't even been wanting to do that. I've just been listening to podcasts, which I have, I love podcasts, so I'm like not complaining about that, but I'm definitely less drawn to books lately. I've been reading Ramona Blue, which I'm loving, but I just 
really often don't want to pick it up and so I definitely think I overdid it last month and put myself into a slump and I only have myself to blame quite frankly. But that's all I got for my July wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned. I would love to hear them or if you've done any reviews on any of them. I love to watch reviews of books that I've already read. <laughs> so please let me know. Um, thanks for watching. Bye!